What is up guys? I'm Gordo. Welcome back to another BPL Week 2 battle against the Surrey Little Leos. And of course, it's going to be a timestamp here on out to of course tell you when the battle starts if you don't want to hear my team prep. It's not too complicated this time around. Uh, versus Matt here, uh, I only battle him once. I know he's a very strategic player and a very smart one at that. Uh, he won the LBA final actually versus me two years ago, I do believe. I was the first league final. Really excited, and I'm faced against an opponent that was very, very aware of what I was doing, and quite frankly, I lost to a better player. So facing him again two years later, yeah, it's kind of exciting. I'm, I'm being very, very nervous as this battle was going to be, of course, transpiring, mainly because he seems really good. Now, the things that didn't make it here was Vaporeon, Yurashi, and uh, uh, Clefairy. He's one of the few teams that decided to bring or get stronger Pokemons by definition uh, in contrast to not having a full roster of 10. So in this league you're not forced to draft 10 Pokemon. If you want to stay with 8 and get stronger Pokemon then that's fine. And he clearly lost a lot of points getting Mamoswine because Cam Camoswine, Mamoswine was highly, highly anticipated for a lot of players and clearly it's a good Pokemon. Now he has Mega Sableye, Porygon 2, Raichu. Uh, Staraptor, Mamoswine, clearly, and Hexers, and you, one does not simply deal with a team like this that easily. I was really scared of his possible Scarfers, uh, I knew Raichu was coming. It kind of shakes my, or it makes me not spam Wild Charge or Thunderbolt with my Tapu Koku. And of course, Porygon 2, Sableye Call, yeah, that's disgusting, it's really hard to, of course, get through, and of course, with um, Cobalion in mind, uh, he's not having an easy time dealing with either of those. Now, my set here is a Lumberry Ripe here with Stealth Rock Sword Stands, mainly for, of course, the Mega Sable. I really, really wanted it to Mega Evolve and uh, trying to stop it from getting up rocks, only for me to, of course, get the Sword Stands up. Earthquake has a good chance of Oko'ing it, and even if it burns me, he will not be able to recover before, of course, Earthquake actually annihilates him with me burned. Uh, Delphox Scarf this time around uh, with Switcheroo to, of course, nerf the Porygon 2, but also outspeed his possible Scarfers. Araquanid, uh, very, very easy set this time, super, super bulky, he is able to survive Stealth Rock damage plus Stone Edge from Mamoswine Leftovers. Um, it's a bit of a downer this this game, mainly because it's it's focused on actually stopping momentum, and against them, of course, my opponent here, Matt, I really need that. I really need a boring set to be able to stop him. It also deals fairly well with, of course, Sableye, mainly because liquidation does 50%, and of course, I can't get first. So if we're joining, oh. <laughs> and of course, Kabeling here, Shukaberry, Iron Hit. Uh, close combat and Volt Switch, very very standard, be able to outspeed any base 100 Pokemon of his team. Uh, Desidui, careful nature, uh, super super special defensive, made to check Raichu, um, should be, actually not be any issue for it. And of course, it also made for Vaporeon that didn't make it. Uh, Tapu Koku, this time around it is a life orb with U-turn. Um, um, Dazzling Gleam, Grass Nod, and Thunderbolts. Very, very standard set. And um, it's very possible that he, if he lacks Scarfer, that Tapu Koku can just rip apart his team very, very easily. Uh, there is no poke on his team outside of actually Porygon 2 that can survive a hit from me. Both Raichu uh, fall after Stealth Rocks and Mega Sableye is flattened by a Dazzling Gleam. So, with all that said, uh, I'm gonna start off with Rhyperior. Rhyperior's main role is either to get Stealth Rocks up or getting that Sword Stance up. Either way is completely fine. So, with that said, let's see how this battle went. So, from the get-go here, we will actually get that Sableye situation, which was good in, in some sense. It meant that Stealth Rocks probably wasn't a possibility, but at least get the chance to KO in it. He goes for Fake Out directly, not Mega Evolving, which kind of felt strange at first. Um, so I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna go, of course, for that sword stance. Uh, and we do have speed here, so we know that he has a no speed investment. Or I have a lot of speed investment. So he goes for a knockoff here, and here's where I start to realize, wait, he might not have Will-O-Wisp. Uh, I'm just gonna go for Stealth Rocks. I'm, I was basically waiting, you know, do your Mega Evolution, but I kind of realized that it might be very well so that he isn't able to Mega Evolve. And my suspicion was sadly confirmed that for this Wi-Fi battle, 
he did not have the Mega Ring, but I was waiting so long for him, I waited three turns, like, go for the Willow, go for the Mega Evolution, that didn't transpire. So here comes Raichu, knowing that Grass Knot is definitely a KO, I'm going to actually switch out, I'm gonna go directly for Consigns and Decidueye, as my opponent here goes for Surf, which is just as effective, really. And there was no way I was going to be able to take that, so I'm really glad I switched out there, did not force my hand, basically, as we're going to see Life Orb, which is good. That means that it doesn't outspeed my Tapu Koko if we're facing it 1v1. So he goes for Volt Switch here, that is fine, I decided to go myself for a U-turn, predicting the Porygon 2 to come in. Or rather, it felt really, really, really decisive that Porygon was going to come in as a Ducky. Momo comes in, which of course is this excellent Pokemon. I really, really hate this Pokemon so much. Maybe because it stops momentum so darn well. So, here is the thing and go to Kobeleon. I'm not gonna attack him. I'm actually gonna go directly for Rhyperior. Rhyperior serves this purpose, but I really just wanna see out for either Toxic or, of course, Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave mainly here. Can he stop my Kobeleon? And he goes directly for Tri Attack, so. My initial thought is probably not. Uh, now, Ice Beam or anything like that will KO me, but Earthquake should do a good chunk and definitely good chunk enough for me to be able to KO him. And of course, with Swords Stats in mind, uh, it would be very dangerous for you to try to, of course, go for Recover after there. Now, he gets a crit there. I really don't think that matters. I am not that bulky. Uh, so, I'm gonna send him 5 for him yet again, then gonna go directly for a close combat. Now that, of course, and the sleeve line is gone. I can actually spam close combat really, really nicely. I shouldn't necessarily do group about it, uh, which is great. But at the same time, there are Pokemon here that clearly can do a lot of damage towards it. So he's gonna switch in his Raichu yet again. And uh, Raichu's fast falling here, as you guys can see. Now, here's the thing Kunsite is still my switch in here. Kunsite does soak any possible hit this Pokemon can carry. As of course it goes for the Thunderbolt. The unfortunate part here, and it, thinks, it seems to be a running theme now, Thunderbolt does paralyze me no matter what league I'm in, as uh, I will directly here go for a Rouge, just try to get some recovery. Uh, I need to sell myself rather bulky. Um, it's it's not super important for the game longer since we know Raichu set. Hidden Power Ice does not do a lot of damage towards me, uh, but I do get fully paralyzed here, which is super unfortunate. Uh, definitely didn't need that as um, he's actually gonna switch it out now go directly for the Star Raptor. Now here's the thing, versus Star Raptor, there aren't really that many things I can do. Um, either way I do it, my switch is gonna be heavily punished and I basically need just residual damage onto it because of the self rocks. I decided that after Roost, I am a good amount of HP where of course the residual damage towards of course Star Raptor should be able to at least force him down a little bit uh, because a recall of course with reckless in mind should easily do at least at this range so that he should be below 50 percent so i decided if it goes for brave bird so be it if it goes for u-turn so be it uh, but if it goes directly for the brave bird that is going to annihilate of course our gun side as he falls below 50 percent so that's good that means that he can only switch on himself probably in once now i'm a scarf variant here and I'm just gonna go directly for the side shock, realizing as I do this that that was probably a bad idea, mainly because uh, I'm opening myself up for, of course, his Mammoth Swine. We don't know the set about Mammoth Swine, so with that in mind, I knew that Araquanid was my number one switch in here. There was no way I was gonna play this thing differently, as of course Araquanid does deal with Mammoth Swine rather nicely. Uh, that said, the rest of my team now that support this video I did fall are we to Earthquake. Uh, which turned out to be a very, very bad thing now. Uh, I'll try to define it because I'm actually going to go a little bit for stall here. Uh, I really, really wanted him to switch out or, you know, do anything. But he's not going to. He's just going to go directly for Earthquakes over and over. And I realized that I messed up. Uh, the reason I messed up is that I am now opening myself up for Dragon Dance Hexorus. I can't work around on Dragon Dance Hexorus. It's going to get it because I can't switch into anything right now because it'll die to, of course, the Earthquake. So at this point, I am by definition screwed um, because, as stated, I don't have any switch in here. Uh, so I am forced to KO this Mammoth Swine. It's either that. I was actually trying to sack my Araquanid. And not going for Leech Live or, of course, the um, uh, 
um, over liquidation. Uh, in hindsight, I should just gone for liquidation, but it, it took me some time to realize what my strat has to be. But eventually, you know, I'm, I'm going to win this matchup, and it's probably against my will, which is, feels so weird. But I need at this point switch into Delphos as soon as Hexrus hits the field. Uh, and after I go directly for the Dazzling Gleam, get him below 50%, and then aim for Cobalion, go for close combat. Close combat is depending on his set. It could be a 60% roll at max, since, since I'm Jolian, not Adamant. So with that in mind, we're going to just wrap it up, I do believe. I still go for Leech Life, like in case he switches out to Haxorus, in case he gets that, but no, he doesn't. He's placed this game perfectly, to, to the nail really. And Haxorus comes in, and all I'm thinking is, I gotta do it, I gotta take a risk. He could directly go for, of course, the Earthquake. Uh, but if he does that, you know, then that's an excellent play, and I'm forced to go tap Coco, try to KO him that way. Um, so, um, as stated, I'm going to switch out, I'm gonna go for Del Fox. I'm basically, you know, go for Dragon Dance, do it, buddy, I am ready. As we see the Dragon Dance, that's good. At this point, we are faster. So I'm just gonna go for Dazzling Gleam, as stated, because it should be enough to KO. But, he does, sadly have the berry to reduce fairy damage and the reason that's such a big deal is because now my roll is not in my favor and it gets a second dragon dance up yes i had switcheroo i know that but trust me that wouldn't have saved me whatsoever and i'll try to explain it later so we'll go for earthquake that's go into ko lumen and while of course earthquake now at plus two is not a guaranteed ko due to shuka berry the Cobalion close combat is not in my favor, and I know that, but I need to take this chance because it's the only chance I get. So everybody's gonna come through, I basically open, don't crit me at least, you know, give me some momentum here. As we do survive it without a doubt, as close combat is, um, well, enough to KO the Hexorus. And that's so important because that was definitely, like I said, a role that was not in my favor. I had pretty much a 20% chance of KO with him from that range. As Star After comes in, I am actually gonna sack something here. I do believe Viporn did showcase that he's worthy of staying in as I'm gonna send in Rainbrand. I was really hoping that Rainbrand was able to take Bravers on this thing. Uh, had he gone for a double edge, uh, I would definitely have been dead. But the Brave Bird is not a guarantee KO, but it is a two-hit KO. Surprisingly, <laughs> I should say. Uh, but I'll just let my Tapu Koku fall, and of course, the Brave Bird damage will of course kill the Star Raptor. So, uh, yeah, in short here, the reason I didn't go for a Switcheroo with my Gel Fox, would you win the games? I kind of, I want to define just why that was important. I didn't do that play, basically. And um, if I have successfully, of course, locked him in uh, to Dragon Dance, that would have been a good kind of momentum opening for me. That would have forced him to, of course, sack up the Star Raptor. But we get into the second issue of the match. We now have a Hexers, which are able to, of course, outspeed my Tapu Koku, my, um, my Gel Fox, and my um, Cobalion. Uh, that means that he could spam Earthquake from that range. Uh, but not only that, it also means that he will be able to outspeed my Cobalion when he comes in, pop my Shukaberry, uh, and then go for another Earthquake before he, because he would be in a full age, amount of HP from that range. I was debating whether or not I should gamble on that, uh, but eventually I decided, you know what, Dazzling Gleam plus Close Combat should be able to KO him. But then he popped a berry, and I was like, oh my god, I'm screwed. <laughs> So, there are a lot of things going on here. Um, Stealth Rocks was a very, very major um, perk from my side of actually getting that up. It was very, very hard, disheartening knowing that Matt was not able to uh, stop that from happening for a lack in the Mega Ring. Uh, he has played the majority of his match on Showdown, has progressed too long in the game. Uh, realized that this match was definitely tough for him, consider, of course, the effect of Stealth Frogs 2 was, of course, his Star Raptor. Star Raptor, just by definition, can rip up hot teams. And due to, of course, his massive speed here and damage output. So it was very, very good knowing that we could force it down very well. Now, the game itself, I do believe it's rather clean. It's a bit unfortunate with, of course, the CGI's uh, paralyzation, but it wasn't that game decisive, though I do realize that losing the CGI made Mammoth Swine since it was scoffed. 
a lot scarier to deal with, like a lot. But yeah, all in all, I'm glad I won. I wouldn't have mind losing because of them. The wrap up games there really showcase that Matt is definitely a force to be reckoned with, and he did all the correct plays. And I was just lucky with that last roll. It's really it's about it. It's nothing. Nothing else can kind of define that situation. And like I said, I'm just glad I'm coming out on top because I know very well like this could have ended much differently. Hell, for what is worth, it probably should. Um, there was an excellent just opening with that hex vs dragon dance. It really, really, really locked me in with my Araquanid there. Really forced me to play a lot differently, and that was that was great. Very, very smart play. Um, so yeah. With that said, guys, thank you of course so much for watching. Thank you, Matt, for this battle. And next week we're going up against. Uh, Quill and Pedro and his team is something else. We we have to prep for a very very dangerous team that definitely I do believe is in Quill's alley. Uh, I'll do my best, but this is definitely a game I feel that you know we are facing up against something that I haven't been fighting before. So with that said, guys, thank you of course so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.